we've got a green bin built. In this video, we're going to go over what every step along the way is to getting a grain bill and built like this. So you're going to see videos kind of jump around because the first thing we're going to talk about is actually pouring the foundation. And I think the foundation got poured in July, early July, I believe is when it got poured. So before we jump into it, hey, hit the thumbs up button for us. If you're going to kind of enjoy these construction long videos, we're going to go from the pouring of the foundation all the way to the finished construction of this bin. But I want to give as much detail as possible. So it's probably going to be a longer video. Buckle in, grab some popcorn or something. Let's get to work. I haven't introduced Rob yet. You want to tell a little bit about what you do? Where you're, yeah, where you're so at? I'm Rob Miller, owner, manager of Ridge Top Farm Supply. Uh, we're located in Memphis, Missouri. Uh, we're a full line GSI dealer. Uh, we design, construct, uh, grain storage facilities from napkin scratches on paper to startup full systems everything like that so today we're uh, starting a bin pad here for ben and kind of go over a few things here rob's been up here multiple times as we've changed our minds and developed this project over over the years and what i really like about ridgetop is that they're a one-stop shop pretty much uh concrete through the construction he'll take care of you guys i'll put all of his information down in the description so if you have any questions about building the pad or any projects you might have coming up give rob a call i'll recommend him i was actually gone this morning and rob has pinned the bin you guys actually saw that in one of the last videos uh rob what goes into making a good bin pad foundation to last a while in your opinion uh one of the big things is you know when you're determining site location is is you kind of want to look for natural drainage because you don't want to put yourself in a hole and you don't want to build on the site that's completely flat so like you can see right here he's already has natural drainage and slope going off to the north so basically what we did is you just want to come in and let the ground tell you how to build the bin we just came in and peeled off the sod we put in some rocks with some fines in it everybody's kind of got the personal opinion with the uh, fill uh, I do not recommend building on any type of soil that you've just put in this first year. If you're going to use soil for fill, I would recommend that it's put in a freeze and thaw and then you can build on it the next season. So some site prep, some planning and stuff like that goes a long way. But uh, I got here late morning and uh, just kind of put the rock in with the skid loader, put in a couple lifts, pack it down, run over it, put in a couple lifts, and then uh, just kind of got it roughed in here. And then as you can see right now, I'm uh, digging our footer. With the mini hoe because it's kind of dry and hard and it's hot and <laughs> <laughs> we've actually we did a clay fat footer uh rob actually built the last two gsi bins to go up here uh he did not pour one of the foundations he poured this foundation we actually put clay under that far foundation and i way like the rock coming in over the clay for sure and it just comes down to really kind of thinking ahead of also one of the other things that we know is an issue too is to make sure your bin pads are up high enough for things such as uh, your unloading systems because actually that one in the middle it's unloading systems in a hole. Before you leave or is that tomorrow? Uh, well, it'll be form pour tomorrow. Form pour tomorrow. <laughs>
And now I guess we're on to the next step of the bin building process. The bin has actually been delivered. Concrete pad has been poured, obviously. Uh, that's where you guys just got done watching, I do believe. Uh, in the actual process of things, the way the time-wise is kind of going, the three-phase power and the power has also been brought in for this bin. That video is already up if you guys want to check it out. But the materials for the bin have been delivered. Here's the side wall sheets. We did get to see how actually the bin wall sheets were formed when we were in Assumption there. So it's kind of cool to start piecing some of this stuff together. Here is all the roof sheets. We got to see those actually be rolled out. Here's the bin floor. I went with the punched holes instead of the little slots. So these are all punched out. There's all the little stands that the floor sits on. Here's the angle for the unload to come up out of the ground. Here's the center gearbox for the sweep. The unload, we went with an 8 inch unload on the bottom to a 10 inch. A little bit smaller of an unload than uh, like those 10 to 12s or yeah 10 to 12 inch unloads. Those move a lot more grain uh, but I don't need that really for the future. If we're going to be dumping into a wet leg, the 8 is going to be probably all we really actually want. We'll be a little bit slower as we unload to a truck but it is what it is. I believe those are roof stiffeners, the inside ladder, the power sweep for this bad boy, the stiffeners, which are those upright pieces that you see on the side of the bin. We also saw those get made. Parts, a couple more ooh, bolts probably. Uh, if you remember that they said that they labeled them at the factory six of eight, eight of eight, five of eight, to know that everything that they're supposed to be shipping out on this load is supposed to be there. Here's the fan. On a big old three-phase motor. Grain bin's been delivered. And then the crew was scheduled to come, which the project was going to take three days to construct this grain bin. This is an 18,500 bushel grain bin. It's a 30-foot, eight-ring tall. I think those are 42s by 7s. So actually, this bin and this bin to the cap that's up there are the same height. If we haven't talked about it yet in this video, this will be used as a wet bin in the future. So on day one, they take the roof and they assemble the roof with the roof fence. And then they put one ring down on there to get things kind of started. And then actually, by the end of day one, they were actually three rings down. One, two, three rings assembled, which I got to help a little bit with. Ridge top boys are back there uh, building and they've actually already got the uh, bottom ring and the roof on. It's not like bolted down, it's just put on there slightly. They have to use like a tree type of thing to actually put all the roof pieces up here. Uh, then once they get started going up, I'll head back here and uh, we'll watch it kind of start moving itself up in the air. I don't know how high it will be at the end of the day, but now that the roof's on, they've still got to do all the stiffeners, like little ladders, manholes, the ridge vents, things like that. So they're going to be a little bit before they actually start raising the bin up in the air. Thanks a lot. I'm glad you're here. You bought my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to do a, a, you guys call this a lift? Or what do you guys call it when jack. you go up the section? A jack? jack. So we're going to help with one of these. So they've got the roof done, the stiffeners, and they're basically ready to just start putting up the sections. This is going to be... First ring first. Yep. And then you'll start your next ring after you get your roof completely assembled. And uh, I'm going to go on the inside. Andrew will stay on the outside. Right. And we'll see what it takes to do this. Two are going to be putting nuts on. Okay. So while he's poking bolts through the seam, Okay. you're going to be starting. You'll do your top middles and your bottoms. So you'll do your top two, your middle two, and then your bottom two. And okay. then you'll fill it from there. Fill it up? Yep. Yep. Okay. So all, all right. he's going to do is he's just going to sit there and he's going to poke bolts. And I'm just going to spin, spin, spin. And you're just going to spin taps. Okay. And you tighten immediately or you just start? What we'll do is when we get done with putting the bolts and the taps in, we'll quickly run around, hang our stiffeners. Okay. And do our stiffeners and then we'll go through and we'll tighten. If okay. We was to, if it was just the first ring, then we just tighten it. Okay. They carry the sheets around with their punches.
Okay, so you, these two here, Andrew. Top two, middle two. Okay. No, over here, below the pine. So I'm guessing like the newer styles aren't like the three stage lifts or whatever. No, are they? Uh, they're still a three stage. They're still a three stage. Yeah, they got like two gear back there. Two all one stage, but oh, okay. then you got shafts that run around everywhere. Oh yeah, like they go all okay, yeah, yeah, I've seen those. Because they're all like connected from there to there to there, I gotcha.
And then on day two, I was pretty busy with harvest, but then they did ring four, five, six, seven, and eight. And along the way, they add the stiffeners and the ladder as it comes down. And again, I showed up and I acted like I was there helping all day. <laughs> uh, eight rings are up in the air now. They're about ready to set it on the ground, correct? But right now they're going around and putting, is this just like a foam tar? Is that like tar on the bottom? Basically, it's just a tar strip. They used to use foam, but... Foam know. rots out, mice get through it and stuff. I, I think that was what the problem with that was. So the tar strip kind of keeps water from running in or out, I don't know, in or out. In. Either one in, more likely. And the jacks will set it down, and then they got to go around drill holes and uh, anchor bolt it down. Then what's next on the list? The transition for the fan. Cut a hole for the transition, cut a hole for the unload, start throwing all that stuff in. And, and probably tomorrow be the be the floor. And these are the anchor bolts. You drill a hole, drop it, hit it, or do you just tighten it and it sucks it up? Yep. You, you'll drill your hole just as far as that'll go. Hammer this guy down into it and then as it pulls it up, takes and it splits this and just wedges it in so the, the industry's gone to that instead of pouring in that anchors to the concrete but these are supposed to be just as strong as anything else So what they're working on now is trying to get the unload in and we're going to see how that happens. Saying you're older and wiser? Yeah. Well, <laughs> older, I don't know about the other part. <laughs> Just uh, yeah, so it's not metal on metal and stuff, and that makes it slide nicer. Okay. Yeah. And even the doors have poly, yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it's good. it keeps the grain from going out, so that way it slides easy. Pick up some of the bottom and wait to dive in. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta drop the, the way these have a hook on the bottom, so you have to drop the back. Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Ah, see, perfect. So there's the transition for the fan. <laughs> Day three of the grain bin build. I'll start out with a little public service announcement. Uh, I'd say what you need to do. You got a blue collar crew working for you. You know, Building the grain bin, doing concrete work, carpenters, whatever. Feed them. Man, those guys, they they live out of gas stations. And <laughs> Granted, now I got donuts and gas station food, but feed them lunch or something like that. Makes their, uh, makes their day a whole lot nicer. Doesn't take much effort out of you to give them a good lunch or something like that. We apparently got a little bit of rain last night. Not very much. Just enough to make things just a little bit tacky here. And we'll actually hop up in here and take a look at GSI's unload system because this is actually relatively new to them and there's some nice features on it. 
Inside the door here, they have a lot of little bearings that the, the door trap rolls on. And then they actually have poly here for so there's no metal on metal. It's actually poly on metal. Which makes it really nice to actually slide things in and out. And if you've ever had a, a door that's hard to open because it's rubbing against metal or pressed on the metal, you know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, you don't. The only thing you're paying attention for is you want this donut. Calm yourself. Calm yourself. So once they show up, which should be any second, we'll get to work. this point here and now they got to get to the sump so they have to lay in the seats or the, the ribs and then they cut out for the sump.
So let's take a quick tour of this bin. Again, this is a 30 foot bin, 18,500 bushels. It has an eight inch unload on it to a 10 inch uh, 45 or 22.5. We do have a power sweep. It's the punched hole floor instead of the slot hole floor. And because this is gonna be a wet bin, we did not opt for any spreaders. I need to get a step for there. Right, bud. Really like this transition here where you can actually take that off and look at everything in there. We ended up with a 15 horsepower fan. And granted, that's on this big bin here next to this, but actually it's the same exact fan. Just uh, maybe oversize the fan a little bit for this bin. And I haven't actually been up these stairs yet. Woo, we're up here. <laughs> Anyways, hatch there ridge vents but here you can see actually how all the ridges are the same height or really close but that's the green bin constructed i really enjoyed that uh, i feel like i learned a bit about the process of actually how green bins are constructed maybe a little bit smarter every day type of thing there um and if something happens in the future might be a little more knowledgeable about going on with that but thank you for the Ridgetop guys for letting me hang out with you, film going on. Again, this bin was built by Ridgetop Farm Supply out of Memphis, Missouri. There's another green bin GSI dealer that we do work with, which is Walker Welding out of Centerville. So if you guys are interested in getting any green bins, GSI, stuff like that, I'll put their contact information down in the description below, uh, along with the GSI website. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. It was longer, but I think we covered a lot of good information, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Jack ball. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs>